This week's Technique Tuesday video explains the fundamentals of a drop shoulder sweater. This is the second video in a series about sweater styles and how they're constructed. If you missed the introduction to this series, which explained what defines a sweater style and what differentiates the five styles that will be covered in this series, there's a link to that video up at the top of the screen and down in the video description. In this video, I'll explain the basic shape of a standard drop shoulder sweater and the various options for constructing a sweater like this. I'll address the advantages and disadvantages of this style of sweater and offer resources for how to find patterns for drop shoulder sweaters and resources for designing this type of sweater yourself. If you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, tap or mouse over the video playback area of your screen and use the chapter titles to guide you to the starting point of the desired section. Use the gear icon to slow down or speed up playback. A sweater style is defined by what is going on between the underarm and the shoulders. So in other words, how the tube of the body and the tubes of the sleeves are coming together and how those things, once they're all come, come together as a single tube, how they are shaped between the underarm and the shoulders. A drop shoulder sweater has a very simple shape. The body is rectangular. The sleeves are nearly triangular except for the cuff. They're very simple shapes. You can knit a sleeveless drop shoulder top by just sewing together two rectangles of fabric. If you do some shaping at the top of the rectangle, then you can create a neck opening that is more rounded or differently shaped. You could do a V-neck or a scoop or any, any different type of thing. And then if you want to, you can add sleeves that are shaped like this, very straight across at the top, and they just are sewn directly to this straight edge of the armhole. Let's look at some examples of drop shoulder sweaters. What I have here is a quarter scale sleeveless drop shoulder sweater um, that I knit partially flat and partially in the round. I started with some garter stitch at the base for the front and the back. Then I joined in the round until I got up to where the sleeve openings were. And then I knit the first few stitches and last few stitches of each row in garter stitch in order to prevent the stockinette from rolling because stockinette is going to want to roll if you don't do something at the edges. And then when I got up to the shoulders, I worked a couple of rows of garter stitch and bound off all of my stitches. Then I could join some of the stitches over on this side at the shoulder with some of them at this side and leave an opening for the head. So this is probably the simplest style of sweater you could ever knit. It's just two rectangles. But I could have knit them each flat separately and then sewn them together on the sides and the top, or I could have done what like I did here where I knit part of it in the round until I needed to do it at the armholes. Here is an actual drop shoulder sweater knit for a two-year-old. And again, the body has no shaping. I have neck shaping at the front, and this one actually has also some neck shaping at the back. Uh, but the sleeves, very straight across, joined exactly there. These sweater parts were knit completely in the round until I got to the armhole. But often, this type of sweater that is knitted with stranded color work, where you're alternating colors like this, oftentimes, this type of sweater, which is a drop shoulder sweater, might be knit completely as a tube all the way to the shoulders, and then an opening is created by cutting into the knitting. This is called steaking. And so some traditions, knitting traditions, will do that, particularly if the yarn that you're using is nice and sticky and isn't going to cause the knitting to fall apart. Here is another quarter scale example where I knit uh, the back bottom up to the shoulders, and then I knit the front bottom up to the shoulders and did some neck shaping, and then I joined the shoulders together. Now I've knit a sleeve, 
I knit the sleeve bottom up. It will be seamed between the two marked places for the underarm, but I didn't have to knit it bottom up when I was knitting it in pieces. I could have knit the first piece top down, come back to the up to the shoulders, picked up stitches for here, done my shaping on either side, and then join them together and knit it down. I could have knit top down and then after I got past the armholes, joined it together in the round. For this sweater right here, I could knit the body parts bottom up. Then instead of knitting the sleeve bottom up, I could have picked up stitches along the edge here and then knit the sleeve downward. So there are a lot of different ways that you can construct this type of sweater. You can knit it in the round, you can knit it flat, you can knit it at uh, bottom up, you can knit it top down, you can knit a hybrid of techniques. You can even knit this type of sweater sideways if you want. The way that the sweater is constructed and whether or not it is knit flat or seamed are independent design choices. They have nothing to do with the type of sweater that is being constructed. So any sweater can be knit in any direction and any sweater can be knit so that it has to be seamed or seamless or some combination. So you are not restricted to any of those. Your choices are not bottom up flat in pieces and top down seamless. Those are not your two choices. And you are not restricted to one type of body and sleeve shape just because of the direction that you are knitting. Because of the boxiness of the sweater and the very simple shaping, this type of sweater tends to be very easy to design and knit. So that's a real advantage. The lack of armhole and shoulder shaping, uh, which causes the sleeve to come directly out of the body of the sweater, means that when the sweater is actually worn and the sleeves are hanging down in the natural position, you can get some bulkiness underneath the arm. So this type of sweater tends to be used for children's sweaters because they're nice and roomy and they give children room to grow and room to move in. And they can also be just fine for men whose sweaters tend to be broader. Women will often have more trouble with this style of sweater, particularly if they have narrow shoulders and or are busty because the tube is all one shape. If it has to be large enough to fit around their bust, but their shoulders are relatively are narrower, then you're gonna have a lot more overhang over the actual shoulders and then you're gonna have a lot more bulk underneath. So the measurements of your sweater are going to be based on how wide the body is and then how long the sleeves are. So when you are knitting a drop shoulder sweater like this, you have these very uh, defined widths of the body and very defined lengths of the sleeve. So this sleeve plus the width of this body plus this sleeve is going should add up to what you want for your sweater from wrist to wrist on your own body. And the way that you would measure that is decide where on your wrist you want your sweater to be and you measure up your arm and then across your shoulders and then down to the other arm. And you want your arms not straight out like a scarecrow and not straight down either, but kind of out and, and maybe even a little bit uh, bent like that. And that will give you the, the total measurement that you want for your sweater. My wrist to wrist measurement is 54 inches. My bust is about 37. So let's say I wanted to make a sweater that was 40 inches in circumference. That would mean that the sweater was 20 inches wide right here. So if I know I need 54 inches from here to here, and that this is 20 inches, then that means that the combined length of the two sleeves are going to be 
34. So each one is going to be 17 inches. But if I decide that instead of a 40 inch sweater, I want a 38 inch sweater, then that would be 19 inches across. I'd lose two inches in the circumference, but I'd only lose an inch across the width of the sweater. So that would mean that the combined length of the two sleeves is 35 inches. So the sleeve would need to be a half, each sleeve would have to be a half an inch longer. If I decided, oh no, I want a lot more ease and I want the body to be bigger, then again, the sleeves would have to get shorter. So it's that measurement from wrist to wrist that tells you how big you want your sweater to be. And then once you've determined how big a round you want the body to be, you can calculate how long each sleeve should be. And you can check your pattern and see if that matches up or if you need to make a change to it. Now, some of the other proportions that are pretty common in drop shoulder sweaters, but don't have to be, are that however wide the body is, that's what the sleeve circumference is. So if this is 20 inches wide, this would be 10 inches deep, but 20 inches in circumference. So that the sleeve would be 20 inches wide at the top here. That's just in general, and that's going to change based on fashion to some extent. Across the shoulders, you will get about one third of the width is going to be for the neck opening and just about a third for each of the shoulders. Those are approximate and that is going to be based a lot on how much ease you might decide you want to knit. Obviously, if you decide to knit something that's super oversized, you don't need to keep making the neck opening any bigger unless you want a wider neck opening. So these days, you will often see these really oversized sweaters, super oversized, and with these like little skinny uh, arms. What happens when you get something super oversized is that they are not making the shoulder straight across like that. What happens though is you do get some drooping when your arms are down to the side, you will get some drooping like this. But one of the things that they do is that they do incorporate shoulder shaping in this type of sweater design. So there will be some sloping here. And so that will help, you, you'll remove this fabric above the shoulder seam, which means it will reduce the amount that's under the armhole, but you still can get this kind of drooping. So these are a modification of a drop shoulder. It's still considered a drop shoulder, but it's a modification and several changes are made in order to accomplish that style of sweater. I'm going to give you a very brief overview of how to search for drop shoulder sweaters on Ravelry. First thing you do is you click on patterns to go to the pattern database. Uh, we wanna make sure we have knitting only selected and we wanna click on advanced search. What we're trying to do is narrow down the 690,000 patterns that are in this database for knitting. So we are looking for a drop shoulder sweater pattern. Sweaters are clothing. So the category of pattern we're looking for is a clothing pattern and we want to choose sweater. So you could choose, I just want to look at all of the sweater patterns. There's 146,000 of them, or I just want to look at cardigans, or I just want to look at pullovers. So if we click on pullovers, we've narrowed it down to 90,000. Scroll down here a little bit. We can choose availability. So is it a free pattern? It may or may not be available on Ravelry, but it will be free and you will be able to see what the source of the pattern is when you look at the pattern page. Let's just limit ourselves to what's available on as a Ravelry download. There are patterns available on Ravelry. Some are paid, some are free. So there's 32,000 of them. Some of those are gonna be free, some are gonna be paid. Now we're going to look at attributes. So this is how we find sweaters that are drop shoulder because it's the sleeve and how the sleeves are connected to the body that determine what type of sweater 
we're, t we're talking about. So we go down here to where it says design elements. We click on that and then we click on sleeve and we look at the choices and what we want is drop shoulder. So we select that. So that is going to get you down to 3000 drop sleeve sweaters that are available on Ravelry in the category of pullover for knitting. Now you can continue to use these attributes over on the left and these filters in order to narrow things down further, but that is going to get you started. You can save your search as well so that if you want to try different types of searches, you can save those. But that's the very basic starting point of how to find drop shoulder sweaters on Ravelry. If you're looking at how to get started on designing your own sweater, starting from scratch with, your, with, with an idea of what you want to do, a one way to approach that is with a book like this. This is Ann Budd's book, uh, The Knitter's Handy Book of Sweater Patterns. Now this was published some time ago. It's still in print, still available. These sweaters were all designed uh, for bottom-up flat knitting and then seaming. And in this book, you will find drop shoulder sweaters, modified drop, raglan, satin sleeve. You'll find all of the types of sweaters I'll be talking about in this series. It gives you a bit of hand holding to kind of figure out what your stitch counts should be and what your proportions should be for a given sweater. So the sweaters in this book range from child size all the way up to an adult, like a, a 54 inch sweater. Uh, for the largest sweater and you can use any gauge. So use the, this sort of charting method of helping you keep track of how many stitches you have and how much yarn you're going to need and that sort of thing. And you'll have these schematics that help you figure out for any given size what the proportions likely are. This is the kind of book that can help get you started on designing from scratch without having to reinvent the wheel completely. Another book that can be really good is this Vogue Knitting Ultimate Knitting Book. So this aims to be just sort of a complete encyclopedia book for all kinds of things for techniques project designs whether it's sweaters or shawls or whatever and shows you how to add different elements to a sweater if you want it shows all kinds of things like how to approach designing the kinds of things that you would need to do what to measure and then how to go, go through the process of planning a sweater so this is a really good general reference book in addition to being helpful for doing some design. This is a book that a lot of knitters like for figuring, for learning how to design their own sweaters. It, it has a, a variety of sweater types in it. Um, it is in black and white and with line drawings, um, but it does help you with things like calculations and, and understanding the process of going through designing your own sweater. This book approaches traditional types of sweaters. So things like Icelandic sweaters, Norwegian sweaters, Fair Isle sweaters, uh, whether they're yoke or drop shoulder, they could be Gansies, all sorts of things. But the basics of how these types of sweaters are planned out, things like proportions, uh, particular uh, techniques that are unique to that particular style of sweater, and how to go about that. So a lot of traditional sweaters are going to be drop shoulder. And so this can be a nice way of, of getting into drop shoulder sweaters, but also getting into traditional designs and learning um, something about those types of sweaters. If you have questions related to drop shoulder sweater construction or other sweater constructions, you can leave those down in the comments below. I'll be interspersing this series with videos related to the most frequently asked sweater questions. I created a playlist for videos in this series, which you can find over here. It will get longer as the series progresses. And if you're interested in other technique videos related to knitting sweaters, you might be interested in this playlist over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.